All right, so today we're gonna to talk about all the books that I read in October. But before that, we're gonna briefly touch on September because I didn't really do a September wrap up because I only read two books the month of September and I already made videos, separate videos for each of those books. And I thought it would have been redundant if I had made a September wrap up. And uh, I haven't been reading that much, you know, the last few months and it's fine. You know, it's not, I'm not really worried about it. But, um, and the only reason for that is because I was doing other shit. You know, I had other shit to do than read, but I was still sort of reading consistently, just not as much. But uh, there's just a lot of books that I wanted to read this year. And that's why I read a lot this October. But as I've said, we're gonna talk about September very briefly. I only read two books. Um, both fantastic, by the way, and um, one of them is A Wizard of Earth Sea by Ursula K. Le Guin. The first time reading that book, and I really enjoyed it, um, this book really means a lot to me. I think it has the potential to be in my top 10 books of all time, and it's already like a fantastic coming-of-age story, and uh, it's really an awesome adventure and uh, an exploration of the character um, of the protagonist, but... The thing here is that I have really never experienced, uh, I guess, reading a protagonist that I could see myself playing as in a live action adaptation. Like, I'm like, I was reading this and I was like, that protagonist kind of looks like me, man. That's crazy. And um, it's very rare that I feel that way about a protagonist about a story. And I really appreciated that. That's why this means a lot to me. And I really love it. And I will continue reading these books. And the next one that I read was Mort by Terry Pratchett. And I am just loving this world, man. I'm loving this world. I've only read three books, by the way. I've read Gord's Gord's, Men of Arms, and then Mort. And when I was reading Men of Arms, I, the brief instances with death uh, or the scenes with death in Men of Arms, I was really intrigued and I was like really interested. And then I found out that death has his own series. So I was like, it's it's not even a question. I will read Mort. And when I picked it up from the library, I was I was just enjoying it. You know, anytime that you have death or the personification of death as a character, it just I I feel that it would be good, right? So this death is sort of different. Like there's definitely a lot more humor, like maybe dry humor in here, um, as opposed to let's say of death from the book thief, right? That is a very serious and heavy novel here. There's a lot more jokes, a lot more humor, but that is not to say that this is an unserious book, right? There are, cause the topic of death is, it's quite, it's pretty heavy, right? It's something that we all experience or will experience at some point. Um, and uh, something that we've also experienced in terms of like the, death of a family or death of friends or whatever death is all around us so it is it is a it, it is a pretty heavy sub subject but i loved how terry pratchett approached it outside of the jokes there is a lot of philosophical questions in here about existence about death about life about purpose and i really just enjoyed that and death as a character definitely one of my top characters in this world there may be even all of fantasy because, um, you, you know, I, I just love the curiosity, you know, the, 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 the desire to understand humans. And that's cool. So anyways, those are the two books that I read in September. And now we move on to comeback season, man. October, I read a lot of books this month, the month of October. It's like... They're like really thick and chunky books too. You know, some are, some are rereads and some are like new books that I've read. So let's start off with the Cosmere. Like these are mainly rereads, but I've read two new novellas or two short stories from the Arcanum Unbounded. I, two stories that I've forgotten about. You know, I read Arcanum Unbounded like a couple years ago and I forgot that there were, there were still, actually there were three that I still haven't read. Um, the White Sand, I think, is a graphic novel, so I haven't really read that. Um, but the two that I'm talking about is the... Oh, man, I'm having trouble with this title. But the the one in Threnody System, I think, is that what it's called? The Something with Silence and Forest of Hell. Um, so 
I was somewhat familiar with this, uh, with, with, with the system. You know, I've read the, the system of like how the shades work from one of the secret projects and I really found them intriguing. So basically, I, I here's the thing. I don't want to talk too much about uh, these short stories, novellas, because they're like 50, 60 pages each. You know, if I, if I keep talking or like if I even mention like a couple plot threads, I think it would spoil the story. But uh, just to briefly, briefly touch on it, um, the forest does something, something, silence in the forest of hell. Um, it's about like these, these beings, right? These shades in the forest and are kind of like the mentors. It has mystery. It's, uh, it's somewhat horror, but not really. But the shades are quite terrifying, really. They're, they're very hard to beat. Uh, is what I would say. There's, um, it, it's for a short story, 50, 60 pages. I think the, the world was well built. Um, I understood the mechanics of it and I, I am very excited to find out more about this, uh, this, this system or how this will be incorporated in the entirety of the Cosmere, right? Um, the next one is Sixth of Dusk. And I really love this. You know, it's set in this one island. Um, we have a man as a protagonist and um he's one of those people okay so here's the thing this is really more or less about you know the preservation of culture tradition and how important it is to preserve but also the importance of technology and progress right um there there are somewhat uh there are themes of colonization in here although it's it's not like right in your face right but um it's very unclear um what their purpose or intent was uh but okay i'm i'm not being very clear in here because i'm trying to be as vague as possible but just know that it's setting an island with various animals and various um, creatures, and then our main character is a sort of, sort of a trapper. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, make your own conclusions. Again, it's like 50, 60 pages. Uh, but uh, he is someone who is fighting against uh, progress and technology. And you sort of like understand both sides. And I think it, it was just very well presented. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I really enjoy those two. Now, for the rereads, I've... I'm doing a reread of Stormlight Archive uh, before Winds and Truth release, release. Is it Winds and Truth or Wind and Truth? Before book five releases. Um, so I reread Words of Radiance and it's still just as good, if not better. It just, it's one of those perfect Sto Stormlight books. You know, if, in my own opinion, this is the perfect Stormlight book because it picks up from where The Way of Kings left off and it just kept that pace all throughout the novel. And honestly, I couldn't find a single thing that I hated in here. Like, it's, it was just consistently good for me uh, from the first page up until the last. And it has a lot of really powerful moments in here. Is it my favorite? I don't know. Like... The Way of Kings is still pretty high on uh, uh, my list. Like, it's, The Way of Kings on a reread, I realized that it wasn't perfect, but I still, there, there's, I just have a personal connection to that book. But this, this is just so good. The next one that I read was Edge Dancer. This is another reread. And I liked it so much more this time around. The first time I read this, like, here's the thing. The first time reading Stormlight Archive, I didn't really care that much for Lyft. I found her quite funny and endearing, but at, at the same time, I was like really focused on Kaladin, Shalon, and Dalner, well, mostly Kaladin, <laughs> Kaladin's story. And uh, every time we have like those interlude chapters, like in book two, there's like this interlude chapter with uh, Lyft, a really long uh, chapter with Lyft. And then, you know, reading Edge Dancer, it's like, I wanted to find out what was going to happen to uh, with Kaladin's story. Like the first time I read this, but on a reread, I'm just like, I, I love Lyft. You know, she's hilarious. Um, you know, the, the book Edge Dancer is like really short and compact story. And I think it efficiently made use of that like short format 
to tell us a story and also tell us, um, you know, or show us certain things, important things that would be important for uh, the, the, the future of the Cosmere, right? Um, this is the book where we are introduced to the Sleepless. Um, and uh, also we find out more about uh, the Herald, uh, the Herald Nail. And, um, and, you know, just reading that from Liv's perspective, I think it, it was just like the right choice. And I just really want to learn more about her, her backstory, like who she was, you know, there's, there's, there's something there, you know, I have theories, but I'm like, there's something there, right? There's, mm, I don't know yet, but hopefully we find out soon. Um, then the next one I read Oathbringer, uh, book three, another thick book. Here's the thing. The first time I read this, I didn't really like it. You know, I, I didn't like it. I see, here's the thing. There's, there are a lot of arcs or plot threads in here that I just felt wasn't used to its fullest potential. And the way that it was wrapped up, it felt like it was kind of rushed, but also at the same time, disappointed. The first time I read it, I was disappointed, especially coming from the high that Words of Radiance is. I was just like, ah, oh, man, that didn't really do it for me. But on a reread, I knew what to expect. Um, I knew what I was going to get. So I was able to really focus more on the the the, the good parts of, of the novel. And I'll tell you this, in terms of peaks, in terms of the highs of of a of this book of Oathbringer, it's second to none. I, I don't know. Like I'll I'll have to reread Rhythm of War, but I would say the peaks of Oathbringer are even higher than Words of Radiance. Some of the scenes in here are like just the top moments in the entire series uh, so far for me. Like on this reread, right? I I think it was just like those moments are so good, so powerful. Um, you know, like moments with Dalinar, moments with Kaladin, even Elokar, Teft, Tarn, and all these other dudes. It's just, it's so emotionally impactful, emotionally charged, and it really just punches you right in the gut. And, um, you know, these are some of my favorite scenes in the, in the series. But also, as I've said, you know, it ha it's not perfect. Like there were things in here that I didn't like that didn't really work for me but man those peaks are insane that's why i really liked it so much better this time around but yeah man um this was this was really uh this was really a fun read um it's not a perfect read you know not unlike words of radiance where i was like oh this is good all the way through this it has some lows but the as i've said the highs are just insane um man it had some of the best reveals too I mean, also, although like the reveals didn't really work for me this time around because I, I knew them, like I've read them, but still, still, they're pretty freaking awesome. Um, then the next one, uh, the last in the Cosmere reread, at least this month, was uh, Dawn Shard. Um, this is a tiny little novella about uh, Risen, Risen, Risen and the Lopin, and also Huyo, and, uh, ooh, what's, what's the, the, what's the bald girl's name? Uh, I don't know, like, the one of the Ardents, uh, the, the pretty bald lady, uh, the, the, uh, Navani's Ardent, I'm not sure, but yeah, she's in here too, but, uh, yeah, this was just, this was fun, you know, um, I think if you love the Lopin, this is a must read. And also it's a must read in the series because it's the, the Dawn Shard is a pretty important um, thing in the, um, you know, the the future or the uh, the fate of the Cosmere. But at the same time, the Lopin, the Lopin has been sort of the comedic relief of the, of the Stormlight Archive, you know, because he's, he's quite irreverent, goofy, and uh, at times just, you know, just, he's one of those people who just says stuff. Um, and, uh, the Lopin is quite endearing and, um, you know, it, I, I cherish this character so much because it's the, the Stormlight Archive, because usually, especially in, um, Kaladin's point of view, 
it's usually quite de depressing, but you would always have like Lopin in here. Not always, but you would have the Lopin in there sometimes and it would just like uh, really change the mood. But uh, anyways, for the entire series so far, he had been like this comic relief, but uh, we get to know more about his character in, in, the, in the novella. And um, it just made him more human, more grounded, more believable. Um, you you get to find out, you know, the sort of, or understand his psyche a bit more, his motivations and his intent, why he always makes jokes, you know, out of his pain, right? Um, and also he made some really, really meaningful, poignant realizations in here towards the end. And it just, it made the Lopin's character way more believable, way more real, and way more human. Um, because even the Lopin, you know, has flaws, you know, and uh, I, I think that it, this was just fantastic, you know, to make him, the Lopin, or the Lopin and Huyo a bit more relatable, a bit more human, but also Risen. Risen is just, you know, awesome. Um, you know, in a world where everyone's just like all about fighting and all that kind of stuff, you know, you need someone as uh, good at negotiations as uh, Risen. Um, but also, you know, like representation for uh, disabled people. And that's really cool. That's it with the Stormlight Archive. Now let's move on to this one. The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. I love this. I think it might be my favorite Joe Abercrombie book so far, so far. And it's weird because I don't like war books. Um, and this is a war book. And the thing about here is that it's divided into a couple of parts. You know, the first part, the setup and uh, just telling us uh, why this war is happening. And then you have three days, three days of battle. And those three days are usually, you know, them planning, talking, talking or strategizing and then the battle sequences which are freaking great and then the um the after effects of war you know the uh, sort of falling action of war and then we go back to strategizing once more and then fight so these are three days and then we also have uh the last part which is the after the battle i love joe abercrombie like i've read like five books well including this five books uh, by him and I, I really love how he writes characters but initially I was a little worried uh, because I knew that this was about war this was about like battle scenes and here's the thing about fight scenes I, I found that sometimes it can be a little too much so if it's just fight scenes after fight scenes it sort of becomes this list of actions that you do and I, I just, I, I don't like that because I'm just going to be like, oh, this is just choreography. It's not moving the story forward. It's just people doing a bunch of cool shit. Uh, you know, them, oh, he stabbed here and he, uh, well, that's not a stab. That's a slash. Slash here, stab here. You know, this person died and this person didn't die. So um, if it's too much of that, I it would just, it would, it almost has this numbing effect, right? Um but say one thing about Joe Abercrombie, say he knows how to write fight scenes, um, emotionally charged fight scenes. And for some reason, it always moves his story forward because the way he writes fight scenes is um, it it's focused on the emotion. It's focused on the humanity of it. It's at the end of the day, it's about human beings, about the the about the characters right and that's what joe abercrombie is so good at writing characters that feel real that feel grounded that feel like relatable and and realistic representation of an actual human being in these imagined circumstances and uh even the way he writes fight scenes it's just it's it's about that. And one of my favorite chapters, I believe in all of fantasy, it's at least top three is casualties. You can find that here in the heroes. And what he did was he used rapid switches and points of view in order to showcase like all these different pitch battles happening um, around the battlefield. And it just flowed so beautifully. It's almost, it's, it's literally like cinema. These are very short 
snippets too, right? But it doesn't feel like rough cuts. It doesn't feel like it, this stop and go uh, pace, but it's like, it just flowed so naturally and so beautifully. And what he does is he would introduce us to new characters, like every like every cut, like there would be sort of like a new character. Well, not always, but sometimes we would also use like, um, you know, very well-known and well-established characters. But in some of these snippets, we would be introduced to a new character that we haven't read before, but Joe Abercrombie would use like two or three paragraphs. And then now you care about this random dude, this extra, this day player in, in this story. And to me, that is just so fascinating how Joe Abercrombie could do that, how he could make me care for, uh, for a random extra. I just think that Joe Abercrombie has like this deep understanding of what makes us human. And he always sort of uh, focuses on that. And that's why, even though there's a lot of fight scenes in here, a lot of battle sequences, it just, it never got old for me. It never felt boring. I, it it never it never felt like I was um, waiting for the the story to move forward because even in those battle scenes, the the story is just uh, we keep learning more information you know about the characters you know um, and I really love that so I, I think so far this is my favorite of the um, of the books of the first law books and uh, looking forward to what's next. Red Country, I believe. Red Country. And I'll see if I can fit that in on uh, December after Wind and Truth. So uh, we'll see. All right. So the next one, I also read three volumes of manga, uh, three volumes of One Piece. So volume 99, 100, and 101. So if you don't know, I've been, you know, an anime only fan of One Piece and it's my favorite anime of all time. But um, here's the thing. I, I stopped watching it after a while. Um, I stopped like around mid Wano because I was like, man, this is taking too long. It I think they were adapting it like one chapter per episode. And it's at that point, it was just like every episode is just them running. You know, and I'm like, bro, I that's too much running. Haven't read the manga, really. I think after I stopped watching One Piece, I read a few chapters of manga where I started from the beginning. I think I got to like 120, 127. I don't know. Like, I think I got to the chopper arc um, in the manga. And I was like, bro, this is too long. This is just taking too long. Um, and I was like, yeah, how about I'll, I'll just watch it or whatever. But I never really got to, um, got, got back to watching it. Like I was thousand, a thousand episodes deep into this, right? I watched more than a thousand episodes of this shit, right? So at that point, I was like, these episodes are getting slower and slower. And also I caught up to it at that point. I think it was like two years ago or a year ago, maybe. No, 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 two years, probably two or three years ago. Um, I caught up to it. I was like, there were five or 10 episodes ahead of me. And I'm just like, you know, for the longest time, I just, I've been binging it, you know, because I started watching One Piece, I think 2018, 2018 or 2019. And I was just watching it here and there. And then the time I got, uh, well, by the time pandemic started, I was in uh, Alabasta and I just went crazy with it. I just went crazy with it, bro. Uh, I was just watching it all the time and I was so addicted to it. But um, anyways, anyways, I wanted to find out what, you know, happened after that, right? I wanted to find out what happened after, you know, the, the episodes that, I, that I've seen because I haven't seen or I haven't watched the episode or the anime in, in a while. Like it's been a couple of years. And um, I was at the library, I went to the teen section and I saw a manga and I was like, yo, let me go and uh, read it. Just read it, you know? Um, I think I was, I stopped probably midway through volume 99. That's when I, where I stopped in the, uh, in the anime, I think. So somewhere around chapter 997 or, 
Yeah, I think it was, I stopped chapter 997. That's probably it. Yeah. It's not even halfway through. It's like <laughs> the second chapter in this volume. But I stopped there and I saw it at the library. So I just like borrowed these three volumes and uh, they're so much better to read. I don't know, man, because it's like, it took me like a couple minutes to go through um, go through a chapter or go through a volume. I think it took me maybe an hour to go through a volume, 30 minutes. I don't know. I don't, I didn't really time it, but uh, it felt really quick to go through them. Um, and I really enjoyed it. You know, um, that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say about these three volumes. I'm going to continue reading it. I think, uh, there are some fight scenes in here that I'm like, i maybe I'll watch that episode, you know? Um, but we'll see, we'll see. But I'm definitely gonna continue reading this. Don't worry, it's not gonna become like a One Piece channel. Like I'm not gonna go talk about One Piece in a separate video. Just It's just something that I that I really love. You know, the, the anime, the story of One Piece, the adventure um, and the found family, it's just something that I, that I that I really love. So I'm just gonna keep on reading it. And I might mention, mention it here and there uh, in, uh, in my wrap ups, you know, depending on, uh, depending on what's up. But anyways, that's, uh, yeah, the three volumes of manga that I've read. And then the last book that I read this month of October is Fury of the Gods by John Gwynn, the conclusion to the Bloodsworn Saga. I really enjoy this. Like here's, I'm going to make a video about the, Well, I'll make a video about the, the Bloodsworn Saga. Maybe next week. We'll see. But uh, I'll talk more about the series in detail in there. But I just really loved how this was, uh, the, how the story concluded. You know, it's not perfect, but I was, um, but I was satisfied. I was pleased with it. And one thing that I would say is like the way John Gwynn writes tension, he knows how to build tension and just like keep it. Because, you know, in the previous two books, it has been established that no one is safe and people will die. And then in here, right, the the way we explore more of these characters or we delve deeper into their relationships and their, the, the you know, their psyche, the more you care about these characters, the more you're terrified for them. But as I've said, like the, the way he builds tension and just like keeps it, holds on to it throughout the entirety of the book is just masterfully done, especially because it was in combination with how he writes relationships, how he writes bonds between people and every single kind of relationship in here I enjoyed, whether it's friends, found family, um, parents to uh, parents and their children, uh, freaking romantic relationships. I enjoyed it. I think John Gwynn is also one of those people who just understands people, understands relationships. And I really love the even romance, right? Romance is like tough to write or tough for me to like. Romance can be extremely shallow. Romance can be more about um, physical needs and um, desire. It's very rare that I'm able to read something as uh, deep or affectionate as this one. The way he writes romance, it, it's so subtle. Like it, it doesn't interfere with the main plot at all, but it's there and then you root for it because it's just, number one, it's not in your face. And it's, it's very subtle in a way that these people don't even go like, ooh, I love you. Ooh, I have feelings for you. Oh, he's so hot. She's so hot. None of that. It was just exploring the the deep bond between them. One example is between these two people, right? Um, and one person just uh, very gently and tenderly tapped her helm against this other person. And there's something about that scene that it's so intimate and it's so affectionate that it's just, it trumps every single sex scene that I've ever read in any book ever. That, that just, that 
really gentle tap on the forehead with, with your helm against another person's helm and then just telling them don't die. Bro, that, that, ooh, that was so sweet and beautiful. That was just such an insanely, insanely intimate moment. John Gwynn captured that moment so beautifully. Right. And uh, outside of that, outside of those uh, relationships that I've talked about, you know, the relationship between a parent and a child, there's there's um, there's multiple examples of that in here. I'm not going to say who. Be, well, I, I guess I could say Orca and Brecca because that's established, you know, from the first book, uh, from the first chapter of the first book. But uh, the other ones, I'm not really going to tell um, because they maybe they're very minor spoilers. They're not even spoilers, but some people might feel that they're spoilers. So I'm, I'm not just going to mention, I'm, I'm just not going to mention that, but I think that was beautiful as well. Um, and then the concept of found family. Eh, whew, I, I think the way John Grin writes relationships, is just so beautiful and it's so deep and it feels so real to me. Um, and then we also handled the topic of grief. And it's just, there's something so human about it, you know? And it, it's those moments that I really love about this book, right? It's, it's, it's this epic where gods are involved and there's lots of fight scenes in here. But it's those moments, those just tiny brief moments that tells you, wow, that character, th these characters are human as well they might have some really impressive and amazing feats but at the end of the day they're they're just as human as we are and th those moments i cherish those moments and that's what i look for when i'm reading a book humanity or just the the, the human experience you know and within these a really awesome freaking uh, circumstances because I, you know, I love mythology. I've always loved mythology. I think I started loving, uh, I, I started with Greek mythology. I think I saw <laughs> because of God of War, I think I played the first God of War and I was like, I guess I love Greek mythology, you know, and then at some point I started listening to um podcasts about it well i don't do that anymore but a couple of years ago i was like listening to it's myths baby and i was just like oh i'm learning so much about like the the truth of greek mythology you know because like back then you're like ooh, zeus is the way they portray zeus in freaking uh, movies and all and are there tv shows but movies the way they portray zeus as in movies like ooh, this benevolent and loving god the the god king of like bro Zeus is a freaking villain. And then, you know, uh, Norse mythology is like really fun too. So um, I've always loved Vikings. Um, I, I found that really in intriguing. And just that time period, I, I really enjoy this. I, I enjoy this. I, I look forward to uh, reading more of John Gwynn's works. I only read the Bloodsworn Saga. I know there are two more series. Are there? Uh, but yeah, I, here's the thing. I really enjoy this. I'm going to talk more about this in, uh, you know, in the future video when I talk about the Bloodsworn Saga as a, you know, series as a whole. And the next one that I read was The Last Light by Pirate Abba. It's book five of The Wandering Inn. And it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. I, I loved it even more than Winter Solstice and Winter Solstice was really cool. Um, I loved Winter Solstice and I don't know, you know, just the, the whole Hogwarts theme. I really enjoy that. But The Last Light, again, it's one of those books where I couldn't find a weakness. Well, maybe the, the Lakin chapters to me were a little, um, would be the, the weak link of this, the weak point of view in this uh, book filled with strong, strong points of view. Uh, but Lakin's chapters are still really good you know, in my own opinion, it's still really good. It's just not to the level of maybe Floss's chapters, Ryoka's chapters, Eren's, um, freaking the, 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 the Red Cross homies. Who else was in this? But, uh, I really, really, really enjoy this one. Um, 
especially towards the end, bro. Like I, I have a video where I talked about this in detail, uh, because it's really hard to talk about this without spoiling stuff, you know, and there might be some people who haven't, uh, read or listened to it yet. So I'm, I'm just going to, you know, steer clear of any spoilers, but, um, in, uh, I, I will link the, the, the video where I talked about this, but anyways, this was just really cool, man. Um, it, it was one of those books where I couldn't find a weakness to it. And, uh, especially those last couple of chapters, uh, I was listening to this on audiobook. those last five hours, bro, I couldn't, I, I couldn't stop listening to it. Like I was hella agitated while listening to it. Like I, I started listening to it. Well, I was cooking dinner. I finished that entire thing, th those entire like last five hours in one go. I think I finished like around 1 a.m. And I don't usually do that. Like I don't listen to an audiobook for that long. Like I do little bursts here and there, like maybe when I'm walking uh, to the train station, walking to like the library or whatever, running errands. That's when I would listen to audiobooks when I'm cooking or when I'm doing other chores and stuff. But the minute I got to like those like final moments in here, I was just like, I couldn't stop listening to it. Like I'm like, I was so hooked, bro. Anyways, that's really all that I could talk about in this wrap up because it's, it's book five. You know, I can't really talk about book five without um without some spoilers so uh you're you're gonna have to go to that other video where i talked about this in detail or things that i liked and this well i didn't really dislike anything as much but things that really worked for me or things or scenes that really stood out to me the most uh you're gonna have to go to that uh the last light review but uh yeah man i really really enjoy this oh my god dude Lit RBG is awesome. Maybe like a few years ago, I would have been like, yeah, I ain't reading that shit. But now I'm like, oh, this is what it could be? Nah, dog, Dungeon dungeon Crawler Carl, and then The Wandering Inn. Although I am a little worried that it might ruin other lit RPGs for me, you know? Um... Last year, I read Cradle by Will White. It's not really a lit RPG. I think it, they call it progression fantasy, and I really enjoy that. So it's like, it, it might have been a mistake to start with, like, the, the best of the best of the best, sir. It might be. That's it. Basically, that's all the books that I read in October and also September. Um, anyways, uh, what am I doing or what am I reading this month of November? So far, I have no plans except for two books. Um, one, I've already started. You know it. Uh, the Unholy Consult by R. Scott Baker. The, um, is this the final? I, I don't think this is the final book. It's the latest book, but I don't know if there are any plans to uh, continue the series or whatnot. But <laughs> this is why I didn't want to read freaking The Unholy Consult in the in in the middle of my reread of uh, the cosmere because it's like i'm hooked right whenever i read r scott baker's books or whenever i read the second apocalypse it's like i can't read anything else i read one chapter of this and i'm like i was hooked i was like okay let me read everything right now i must finish this like right now like bro i gotta go edit the video but uh, <laughs> I just, I love it, man. Um, but yeah, this, I'm just going to finish this. I might finish this in like a week, but I am, I am quite slow when I'm reading R. Scott Baker's uh, books because there are just like things in here that I would have to look up at least in the, in the freaking the thick, uh, what is this? Appendices of this one. Look how thick the appendices are. That's dope. But anyways, this is what I'm planning on reading in November. Um, I'm going to finish this pretty soon. And then after that, um, well, it's over there. I'm not going to go get up and, yeah. After that would be uh, Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. So uh, finishing my reread of the Stormlight Archive just in time for Win and Truth. But anyways, those are the books that I've read 
in October and also September. And then those are the books that I'm planning to read in November. That's all I have for you. And I'll see you soon. Peace. Yeah, bro. That's what I hate about doing these videos. Like, I be talking too much, bro.